again. This morning, it's good to have um, Tim Fellows with us from Love Black Country and John Grant from Love Samwell. And we're just going to have a, a chat and a conversation about how things are and how things are going. So, guys, I'm going to ask you a really important question to begin with. All right. Just real, real, you know, real important, real vital question we need to ask is, do you think the Premier League should be suspended and that Villa should be relegated? Oh, so Tim, I I'll ask you. <laughs> did you get that question, uh, John? Well, I did. You go first, Tim, as the as the proper footballer. Well, I think it's, I think it's a very pertinent question. Gareth, to start off our conversation. Yeah. And uh, as a, well, I'll say an ex-Wolves fan, but as, as a Wolves fan who doesn't go down very often at all, but used to, I think it would be great for the Wolves to finish in fifth rather than sixth. But I suppose to compensate for that, to see the Villa fall out of the Premier League into the Championship and probably then into Division 1, 2 and 3. Yeah. Wouldn't be a bad thing. And be replaced by the Baggies as well, of course. Uh, well, that, that's possibly even worse for a Wolves fan. Go, we won't go there. <laughs> Guys, on a more serious note, I suppose it'd just be good to understand where each of us, we've all had to adjust to a completely different landscape in terms of what we're doing missionally, what we're doing for church, what we're doing for business, family, and just getting a sort of insight really into, into how you guys are, are doing and, and, and sort of how it's affecting you in terms of John as Crunch and Tim as Love Black Country and myself probably as well for some it can just to explain how how things have been because it's it's been a pretty interesting few weeks so then john do you want to kick off how, how are things with you guys in terms of crunch and family and church and stuff like that yeah well like everybody it's a massive adjustment um so 95 percent of what crunch does is in schools so we do one-to-one -one work we've got mentors that go into schools working with some high tariff children and young people, vulnerable young people, young people, a lot of stuff around emotional health and well-being. And um, for us to having to adapt to suddenly no face-to-face, -face, um, which is what we've always done to over the phone, looking at video conferencing, making sure that we're keeping everybody safe uh, as they're doing that as mentors and also obviously children and young people. Huge adjustment. Uh, working from home with my wife. I work with my wife anyway, but to be <laughs> in a confined space where I'm not, kind of uh, wafting off over to you know meetings uh, with the council and that and we're suddenly in this small confined space 24 7 is a challenge but no we, we're doing all right church like everybody it's been great to see I, i've loved a sunday i've spent loads of sunday just kind of dipping into everybody's sunday service and everybody does it differently and uh, we're, we're phoning around everyone in our church so bethel church in Albury. We've got a rotor making sure that everybody has a phone call once a week, as well as pre-recorded stuff for Sundays. Um, sadly, I'm doing a number of funerals, which is a really weird, uh, I've always done funerals, but when there's only six people allowed and um, it's very different, you can't put that arm around someone's shoulder or, or squeeze their hand or shake their hand even. So that's been an, an interesting adjustment as well. So yeah, like everybody, hopefully this is a time of reset, it feels like for me, maybe for a lot of us in the church, is, is God using this to kind of reset us, refocus us and make us value what, what's really important and what isn't. What do we just rush headlong into and run around doing, which maybe we don't need to be doing after, after this is uh, kind of blown over. That's really interesting, that, that whole idea that this is like a season of adjustment, but actually we all need time to adjust, don't we, as well? I think um, yeah. I found it really interesting, like rushing into, you know, can we do the food bank? Can we do the community stuff? Can we do the church stuff? Can we do it online? There's a tendency to try and sort it all out straight away, but I've, I've found quite a bit of freedom, actually, in just in thinking, you know what, we need time to adjust. Everyone would need time to adjust, wouldn't they, to a new landscape, a new mission field. Yeah. And it feels like that for, for everybody. You know, we're all in the same boat, whether we're big church, little church, church plants in the city, suburban. It feels like we're all in that same season, which I, I feel quite together in as well, that I know everyone is doing the same, is going through the same things, different things, but the same adjustments. Yeah. Um, and it's really encouraging to hear from other leaders that, you know, uh, are, are dealing with that landscape and wrestling with those issues. How about yourself, Tim? Um, yeah, well, I'm... Much like uh, a number of people, I think, who work in, in between churches and in the inter-church world, I'm bivocational. So from a Love Black Country perspective, it's pretty much 
no massive changes because we're not particularly dependent on on meeting on a very regular basis as a network we obviously missed our our quarterly breakfast a couple of weeks ago last week actually which would have been great as our first get together since 2020 in january yeah. but i suppose the strength of a network gareth in many ways is is we it's based on relationships yeah yeah um so that hasn't changed and what we are finding is we're stepping up our our communications to help some of the churches who probably are not doing that many communications because they're not prepared for it and just keeping some continuity and sending information out we're doing this thing with the nhs prayer on thursday night for example which will give some people again an opportunity to connect online for those that can so Apart from missing that, and you know, we felt like there was a real possibility to pick up momentum after 2020 with the breakfast last week. But we have to trust the Lord in these things and know that His yeah. timing is ultimately perfect. Yeah. Um, my other side is I, I run a financial, uh, what do you call it? I'm, a finan- I'm an IFA, independent financial advisor. So my business side is significantly affected. To what degree yet, I can't say. I don't know. Um, we obviously aren't able to meet people face to face. So for the type of people that want to be advised face to face, it's kind of everything's on hold. So like many people, maybe in your church, you'll be listening in Smethic, you'll be listening to this. Uh, livelihoods are affected. We're under threat. Um, we're standing and we trust in the Lord. We've been through difficulties before, but this is pretty new and unique in many respects. But we count our blessings. Yeah. And uh, and we we just got to adapt. We have to be able to adapt, particularly in, in the yeah. kingdom dynamic. If we can't change, then we can't repent. Yeah. So we've got to be adaptable. And well, you know, I'm I'm just having to keep saying, Lord, help me to trust you more. Mm. Um, help me, Lord. You know, in the areas where I'm insecure and I'm very uncertain about things and lacking in faith to some degree. If I'm honest, guys, but yeah, absolutely. Hey, human yeah. and like many of us, I want to learn and grow more. Yeah. I mean, I think, like I said, this whole season is the season of adjustment, but a season of uncertainty, isn't it, for so many? I mean, we've seen it here yeah. at Food Bank on Friday, we, you know, and, and today we've given out another 60 parcels, but it was 81 on Friday. And yeah. the stories were often about universal credit. You know, I've just had to go on to universal credit. I've just started. Yeah. I've, never, I've never been on universal credit before. I've never been on benefit before. And suddenly find themselves in a completely you know, yeah. a different world and, and that sense of like, you know, how it must feel, you know, I, I said, you know, I'm, I'm like you guys by vocational couple of jobs, but to be honest, there's a fair amount of certainty in my jobs. And, and actually a lot of my, my employers have been, you know, the church, cinnamon, can they've been brilliant. You know, they've, they've, they've helped, you know, navigate this adjustment, but for lots yeah. of people, there's not so, you know, they don't have that privilege of having either they're, you know, freelancing or they're good, you know, their employers have, just said off you go or there's not even the furloughing you know it's, it's a lot of that going around yeah. and, and we've got to be out and we've got to help people find that that rock find that that yeah. place of refuge in such an uncertain yeah. time definitely definitely yeah yeah well bless you, well, bless you guys and um, i think one thing um I t- we shared uh, last week i think we talked about um pete greg uh, in one of his devotions uh, a couple of weeks ago talked about the chinese uh, word for crisis um, is made up of two characters one of them being danger and the second character being opportunity mm. and and I, I, although i think you know we've, we've well documented the danger of this time you know we know as, as as john has been saying you know he sadly had to see people um you know their funerals you know we're having to see people go through this uncertainty we know the dangers it's very you know we see it's very real in the headlines every day i just wondered if if just for these last few moments just to sort of focus on the opportunities and what are the opportunities are you seeing for, for, for your ministries and the churches you're involved in and the, and the wider black country? What, what are the opportunities are you guys seeing at the moment? Shall I start with them, um, John? Yeah, I mean, interestingly, on the ground, um, it's a bit like this is a window. I really believe this is a window of, that we have an, a great opportunity to share the hope that we have in the midst of hopelessness and fear. People's um, eyes are opened. It, it's a different time for everybody. Um, it, it, just a r- r- real quick story. Lindsay, my wife, um, had a phone call from the photocopier company who we lease our photocopier off. And she basically just opened up how scared she was. And um, 
could we be praying for her? And it was just like very normal, very easily been able to pray in that situation. In a council meeting I was at before all this happened, once again, it was the same opportunity just to share some scriptures. So I believe the church, rather than us have to just think, oh, let's wait until everything gets back to normal. Let's use this opportunity to to bring Christ into, into the midst of all the hopelessness. And I think for the church, we, we've got to adapt as well, you know, individually. We are obviously we made the church is made up of individuals. It's not a building, but sadly, still a lot of what we do is still centered around a building or a Sunday morning. And I love it that church is a having to having to adjust, think outside the box, and use this as an opportunity to connect with the wider community in a, in a way maybe we've never done before. Yeah, absolutely. How about yourself, Tim? What opportunities do you feel that that we've got? Um. I'm going to probably go slightly off pace here, guys, because yeah. part of me just wants to talk about all the opportunities we've got with social welfare and mm. how the church can be seen back at the centre of community. But, and I think all that's true. But my heart, if I was really honest, I think the greatest opportunity we've got is, as leaders, is to help Christians who ultimately make up the church understand and realise more than ever that their relationship is meant to be with Jesus. Yeah, and not with his wife. Yeah, and I suppose I grew up uh, more of a churchian than a Christian for most of my early years, twenty twenty years probably, in that I, I had a relationship with church and I could talk about church all day, but I, I, I was never really found talking about Jesus. And I loved my church, and I'd have a love for God, but I don't think my love for God was as deep as my love for His church. And ultimately, ultimately, yeah. that's idolatry. But if I soften that, what, a, what an amazing opportunity it is for me to realise that on a Sunday morning, I can't go to a church. Yes, I can go online, but I can't connect with people in the same way. But I can close the door after my online stream and talk to the Lord because he's with me. Yeah. He really is. And, and he wants me to know him more and more and more. He wants me to experience life on a much deeper level and to depend on him. And crikey, guys, as churches, organisations and individuals, this is a season where we need to depend on him. And Absolutely. I think one of the Psalms is, you know, my soul finds strength in God alone. Yeah. So it's that, it's that exclusive dependence on him that I think is probably the ultimate opportunity for us to disciple ourselves and each other and our people into finding the Lord and, and knowing that, it, that the Lord's very able to, you know, to find our people out there Mm. Is the lost shepherd? So he's not the lost shepherd, is he? He's the good shepherd, yeah, yeah. and uh, and he's still looking for people. And you know, so wherever mm. we are, whoever's listening to this, if if you know the Lord, there's always an opportunity to know Him more and mm. more. I believe we'll spend forever finding out new things about Him. And as as I'm going to say in the, the the thing we're doing tomorrow at the breakfast time is is Christianity is not about Jesus. The gospel is Jesus. Mm. And that revelation, I think, is more open now to be to be truly found by people who are really looking for him. That would be my answer, Gareth. That's brilliant. That's a really good answer. I mean, I, I love the fact that, you know, this is a time, you know, like, you know, we we mentioned what we, we are doing here. And I, I know that, you know, a lot of us are running around here, there and everywhere. But what I love is that, the, the, you know, and we need to get that, that, that strength and that courage from our Lord Jesus. Don't we? we need to just go back to him and make sure we're doing that. And that's our source. Yeah, but yeah. those people that you know, perhaps can't get out and do this stuff, you know, can't get out and do the things that we're doing here right now and spend it can. I just know, I just want people to get deeper into their relationship with Jesus. I want people to really find that reliance on him, find that connection yeah. with him because we're going to need them. You know, when, when this is all over in terms of this crisis is over, yeah. there's new crises yeah. around the corner, to be honest. There's, you know, this, this mm. is society's going to look different. Church is going to look different. And we're so going to need Jesus in the midst of all that as well. Yeah. This is not yeah. going to, yeah. you know, this is some aspects of this will go away, but actually other things will, will appear. And we just so need yeah. to cling to him. Don't we so need to connect with him. Yeah. And that's really powerful, Tim. Thanks for that. Mm. I just, no, just, to, just come back to you, Tim, before perhaps I'm going to ask you just to pray for us. But before doing that, just, just how you're feeling, because I know, you know, together 2020 was such an amazing event. We were so blessed to be together as the, you know, the body of Christ in such a powerful way, you know, thousands mm. of people, um, just that sense of togetherness. And, uh, you know, mm. it feels like, I know we talk about being together apart and we were in terms of we're apart, but we're still together. 
and, yeah. and maintaining that unity how do you feel that we can maintain that unity in these times when you know we are disconnected but we're still wanting to be connected well thank you gareth and again first of all thank you at raglan road you guys and other churches in smith that came and supported that evening it wouldn't have been the same without you know what i mean that um we love Smethwick and uh, yeah. you, know, you, you help us connect into Birmingham as well, which is wonderful. Yeah. So thank you for being with us. I know John feels the same as part of you guys being part of Sandwell. Yeah, yeah, um, when, when I think of the word unity, there's two things that have always come to my mind. One is kind of earth to heaven and one is heaven to earth. The, the, the um, earth to heaven is, I think it's in the Ephesians where Paul says, make every effort to maintain a spirit of unity and a bond of peace so i think there are things that we can do as humans there's things that we can do as the body on earth we can make every effort to keep connected which we hopefully do in our in our groups and our local churches and our boroughs etc um so we can do as much as we can we can you know i believe we can use the online stuff if we if we've got that facility and keep ourselves connected to people we can use the telephone and you know, sometimes we can talk across the fence to people. I'm sure, soon we'll be able to do that a, a lot more. But the other, the other story that comes to mind is in the story. I think, pretty sure. Don't slap me around if I get this wrong. Figure, <laughs> I think it's Hezekiah, where the children of Israel celebrate the Passover a little bit late. And there's a scripture that says, "And the Lord granted them unity." And I think there is an aspect, Gareth John, that is. Unity isn't, isn't just something that we do. There is a supernatural reality to it. Uh, when we read John 17, we, we see this word oneness being used by Jesus when he prays for his disciples. And, us. and I, I believe there is something that the Lord is releasing and revealing to us and is going to reveal more in these times, yeah. which is why this word together has become so important to us. It's, it's not just a nice word, oh, you know, come by our, let's hold yeah. hands and sing songs. Yeah. It's... There is something inordinately powerful, not only when two or three come together, but where two or three parts of the body connect. It brings joy to the Father's heart. It makes the cross even more redemptive to Jesus. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit is absolutely enamored when he sees something happen. But then the Lord puts his mix into it and turns it into something supernatural. So for me, this, this, journey, to, this journey of unity to oneness we now call the, you know, the together journey. So I'm just praying that the Lord, and of course, guys, you knew, didn't they? You know, we had this most wonderful evening on the 4th of January, and suddenly we find ourselves almost in a season of exile from normality. And, but he, he, he can do it extraordinarily above all we ask or think, Amen. according to his power that is at work. So I'm praying that he will use this, this, uh, requirement for us to reach to be together rather than finding it easy as a, as a, an incredible spiritual technology to lift us divine hydraulics to another place where we can really begin to see the kind of revival stuff that we've all dreamt about and dared to believe is possible even when others have laughed at us we can say no it's coming do not be fooled by this this virus is not the end of the story yeah. God wasn't on a holiday when this was released. Yeah. He knows exactly what he said. And for me, what's he saying to the black country? Throw your arms around the next generation. Find me a donkey and give me a decade for mission. And I realize if those words are new to you, Gareth can explain it. <laughs> you guys, <it's laughs> But for me, what does it yeah. mean? Nothing's changed. What God yeah. has said he'll do, he's going to do. And yeah. he has an inex wonderful knack of turning the things which were meant for harm into good and making all things work together for good. So, so if that was a long answer, but no, no, no. Touched on me there, mate. <laughs> no, and keep us inspired, mate. Cause you know, this, like you said, that 2020, that gathering, there was a sense of excitement, a sense of anticipation. Yeah. And I, I personally haven't lost that. Do you know what I mean? This is, this is a time that is yet yeah, incredibly difficult, incredibly challenging, but I've not lost that. And in fact, possibly yeah. it's even grown in this time. Do you know what I mean? And, and we just got to, you know, keep clinging to that. Don't we cling to the fact that this is, yeah. Such a such a time as this. This is what God's given us, and and He's opening up doors. He's opening up opportunities, and you know this is, it's a wonderful time. And it's hard to say that when we know there is death, we know yeah. there is challenges, we know there is difficulties. But this is also a wonderful time. The goodness of God is on display, and we yeah. want to yeah. keep doing that. And I praise God for that. Um, yeah. Thank you, John. Just before we before we go, just in terms of 
how you how you're feeling about maybe in terms of what church might look like for you guys because i i don't know i've got a sense that you know church is is very different now but i'm also hoping actually to be honest that church is very different when we get back together again i think there's going to be a great celebration when we get back together again but mm-hmm. i just feel that i don't know if you feel this but you want things to also be a bit different when we get back um yeah. how do you feel about that do you feel this again just something around what church might look like beyond coronavirus yeah i mean as we know throughout history there's moments in time where god does something and shifts things and throws a lot of things up in the air shakes the church and and it comes out different and i I really do believe that some of it, some of what we do will go back, but but I don't think we'll go back and look the same kind of shape. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll all be different. The reality is, I, I, I use the terminology, and Tim always picks me up on this because he's right, but when, you know, I'll often uh, call myself, when I phone up a family, I'll say I'm, I'm a vicar, reverend, I'm a minister, trying to find a word that a family will understand the concept of what I am. Um, and you know Tim always says look we're all ministers we're all called to minister and I I really hope that the body of Christ ministers to its community whether that's over a fence getting a a prescription for a family by getting a food parcel I mean it's great what you guys do but all of us play a part in not just expecting the person at the front to do everything and make sure everyone's all right but actually it's all our responsibility to, to check on if I pick up the phone and say that person that sits in the church next to me, you know, and I chat to every Sunday. Do, do, is it good that I would just phone them up and say hello and see how you're doing? And I hope people will come back when we can gather physically together, more empowered. Um, and I, I really hope that the church has grown because ultimately yeah. that would be a real sign that uh, whether we, we can put on a flashy, great show on the internet or whether it's just the way that through our togetherness, like Tim said, or relationships, or people seeking God in the midst of incredible crisis. I hope that we see the church when it does come back. There'll be loads of new people, I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's hope we've kept people as well. But ultimately, yeah. that people are empowered and see that they've seen God move during this time in a way that they've never seen him move before. Yeah, man, that's fantastic, John. Guys, I've been really blessed by this conversation. Just really appreciate your time and, and thanks for, for being with us. Uh, Tim, would you, would you close in prayer for us? Is that okay? What it is, mate. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Lord, you are good. Jesus. You are great. And we do we do love you, Lord, and we do want to love you more. And uh, as we've just said, we pray for every person listening to this. Yes, God. That each of us will be drawn deeper into a relationship with you. Deeper and deeper. That Lord, supernaturally you will encounter us whether in the everyday life, in our dreams, in the night. We read so many times, Lord, and we're here today of you having encounters with people all over the world, sometimes in Muslim countries where there's no church even present. And Lord, we know your heart, you don't love any one of us more than another. Your your heart is so deep. It's a deep well. Mm -hmm. So for everyone, we pray, enable us, Lord, to, to find that new place as we grow in you, of being loved by a perfect father who gives generously without finding fault that's who you are and we pray for your church particularly in smedic lord in this possibly quite difficult place to live with so many other other faiths being prominent we pray lord that a light will shine in the churches in smedic and in raglan road especially lord because that's who we're talking with today we pray for the light to be so piercing like a laser the intensity grows and grows as that individually we come to know you more and your light shines in our hearts. We pray for the church, Lord, for the leaders. We pray you bless the saddlers as they're away. We pray your blessing on those beautiful people. We pray for Gareth and the team that are now heading up and leading the church for the next few weeks and months. For strength, for increased capacity, Lord, not necessarily in time, but in, in heart and desire. Pray, Lord, that they will fall in love with you all over again too and will radiate a light from within them that affects us, all of the people around them. We want that for each of us, Lord, all of us to be more effective for you. But it has to come through our love for you, not through our effort and thinking we need to earn something. Thank you, Lord, that you've already qualified us and positioned us as sons and daughters. So that's what we pray for today, Lord, is a greater intensity of light in Smethwick and beyond. And across the black country, Lord, we pray, continue to move 
continue to lead us, to continue to inspire us and, and show us the things that you are doing and help us to hear the things that you're saying in this season so that we can all come out of this, Lord, not escaping as such, but we come through this season stronger, more refined yeah. and more equipped to reach the 1.2 million people that live within our four brothers. Uh, we ask these things, Lord, in your name, Jesus, because we believe you're able and because you're the only name, the only name that we can call on. In Jesus' name, amen.